Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling a Zim. I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to take a look at Rive. R-I-V-E. So Rive is an animation tool where you can make interactive graphics. And we've already, uh, we're, we're, we've already been making interactive graphics in Zim. We called it interactive animation, for instance. Uh, we'll go here and look at some of the features here. Interactive animation is one. And so there's a little interactive animation of Dr. Abstract. And then we have this one here where it uh, is a, an animated sprite that we're animating on the stage there and we're shooting. So great, we've already got these types of things. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, Living that back up. Uh, but uh, Rive is another tool uh, to be able to um, use for that. And I've got kind of got two audiences here. You might be from Rive and looking at Zim. So we want to do a quick introduction as to what Zim is. Or you might be from Zim and wanting to know what Rive is. It is actually a Zim bubbling to show you how we can bring Rive into Zim. But it may be that you don't know Zim all that much. So let me give you a quick overview of Zim. Uh, Zim has all sorts of interactive features, like there's connectors. Um, let's see, there's the sprites that we had mentioned. We can put text on the page. Uh, we have lots of components, so all sorts of uh, components. That's a mainstay of Zim. And shapes and particle emitters, and we can animate vectors much like GreenSock animates. We're on par with the functionality to GreenSock, and that's a lot of functionality. We're even beyond. We're animating along paths, but those are user editable paths. So we've got lots of stuff going in, in Zim. It's a general canvas framework with a simple, powerful JavaScript that lets everyone from beginners to professionals code creativity. That means we have like designer code. We specialize in code for designers. Nice, easy code like circle.center or new circle.center.drag and you're dragging a circle. So you can try it out in the editor and start out there. So if you're making games, you should not be making games in Rive and raw JavaScript. You should really consider taking a look at Zim. We've got all sorts of things, features for games and it'll make it much, much easier. We've converted some of the Rive apps that we've seen out there to Zim at at least half the code or less than half the code. All right, so we're making generative art, e-learning apps. We've got all sorts of UI, UX, interactive ads, etc. So Rive will be a tool in which you can get some nice interactions, perhaps right into 3D. I think you can get Rive into to 3, uh, 3.js, for instance. But if you do it through Zim, I think you'll find that it's um, quite cool. Uh, we're going right into VR as well. And Zim is constantly coming in at less code than all of these others. Okay, so that's a little bit of an intro to Zim. And now I'm going to switch hats though and start talking to our Zim people and tell you what Rive can do. So if you have already know Rive, then this part will be kind of boring for you. Uh, here are some Rive examples. So this is a Rive animation and we're gonna take a look at how we brought this into Zim. And here's an example with input. So that's a Rive animation right there with a Zim slider controlling the input. So that's a, a number input that says how, uh, what percentage this is at. And Zim slider is controlling that percentage. Here's a listener. And that loaded in quickly because I've been there already. But the very first time you're going to load this, you might experience about a 10 second to 20 second delay, maybe 10 second delay. Um, that's because this is using Rive listeners, yet we're in Zim. And so we have to convert the Rive listeners, or sorry, the Zim listeners, where the mouse is in Zim, to Rive. And to be able to do that, Rive requires you to load the Canvas Advanced. Uh, um, script. And that Canvas Advanced uses a thing called WASM or WebAssembly. And that WebAssembly initially takes a little bit to load. 
and then afterwards, once it's loaded, it's it's fine and fast. So we just saw it fine and fast, but the very first time I loaded that later or earlier on, it was a 10 second delay. Anyway, here's a listener and here we're turning off that. So this shows us how we can capture a Rive event and control whether uh, Rive animation is on or off or whether the Rive listeners are on and off. Okay, now it's back on. Uh, then we've got node. So node is how we can access the little parts inside of Rive. So when I press this, we're going to be animating to sound those little speakers there. And actually the whole box, we're animating the scale of this box based on Zim Soundwave. Okay, so this was done by Pedro. Thanks, Pedro. Um, he actually made this all in Rive and raw JavaScript. And when we brought it into Zim using Soundwave, we cut that uh, at least in half the code. I think it was even more than that. So in other words, Zim can simplify what you're doing with Rive by quite a lot. And you can do a lot more as well. As a matter of fact, maybe you'll even fall in love with Zim if you've even if you haven't coded before, we're teaching kids how to use Zim. So we're, we teach everybody, professionals and kids, how to use Zim. So uh, come on in if you're from Rive and check that out. All right, let's see. Let's take a look at some code then. We'll go and take a look at the animate code first. Yeah. F11 uh, to drop this down. And here is the code for animate. So we're bringing in Rive right there as a script. As far as I know, they don't have a module available for us yet. If they did, it's possible, like we considered, it probably could have worked it out to import zim underscore Rive there. Uh, but for now, it's a script tag and we're just bringing in the zim module as well. Zim has a frame where you can set the background color and this is the outer color so basically the outer color is this dark and the frame color is this red and the rive image so we're bringing in the logo for the r there is the rive image and we're fitting that to the browser so if you take a look uh, this fits in the browser window there like so all right, so if you haven't been to Zim, that's called the Zim frame. That's why we're a framework. And when we're ready, it calls the ready here. And now we're making a new Rive, telling it where that Rive came from, giving it a width and a height of the canvas. The traditional Rive, I'll call the, the there's Rive has a Rive class as well to make um, a Rive object. So I'll call that the traditional Rive or the Rive Rive. <laughs> Saying Rive Rive is a bit awkward. Traditional Rive. The traditional Rive expects us to pass in a canvas. Um, but that means we'd have to make a canvas or have it a canvas in existence. With Zim, we just give it a width and height and that will make a canvas for us for the Rive. You can also pass in a canvas if you really wanted to, but uh, here we don't need to. Setting it to autoplay and telling it the state machine bumpy. Uh, Rive, uh, one of the advantages of Rive over something like Adobe Animate is the Adobe Animate's got timelines, Rive's got timelines. Adobe Animate has action script, which basically gives that way more advantage than anything in Rive. But anyway, Rive also has visually this thing called a state machine, and that's a lot of fun. It's basically uh, you take your animations and drop them onto a uh, like an area panel and then you can move them around and you can join them with little arrows and you can say when will this animation turn into that animation what will it do will it have to run three times does it depend on this it does it on this action does it go there and so you get the state machine so I'll show you that a little bit later um, but anyway that is the state machine that is playing the bumpy all right good so there's our Rive object Rive, the traditional Rive, also has a Rive object that might have properties and methods available after you make it. We didn't want to play with that. We wanted to give you basically the same Rive experience. So all of the parameters that are available in Rive are available here too. There's more. Uh, and I'll show you a few more of those later. And then all of the methods and properties are also available on this R object or whatever you call that. So how do you put this on the stage? How do you get this to go into Zim? you would use the display property of that Rive object. So we've added a display property that is a dynamic Zim bitmap, much like how we did 
video. So when we bring in video, we pipe it into a dynamic bitmap that's constantly refreshing. When we do Rive, we take the Rive canvas, the original Rive canvas, and pipe it into a Zim bitmap that is constantly updating. And that can go on the stage. That could be uh, have a, its registration point centered, it's scaled, uh, we can position it. I don't know if we needed to center the reg in this point. I think we were trying some spinning and stuff like that. But anyway, I, I, I may not even need that. But there's us scaling, there's us positioning, and there's us animating. So we're animating the X and Y property and the scale. Oh, that's why we centered the registration point. When you scale, the, when you, uh, scale uh, if we're, as we're making this bigger, we, we don't want it to get bigger from the top left corner. We want it to get bigger from the center. So that's why we centered the registration point there. And we're animating the scale. We're also animating uh, the speed. So the speed is 0.5 or 0 0.05 at the top and one. So full speed, full animation speed at the bottom and a slower speed at the top. Isn't that neat? So when it's up here, higher, it's slower. Otherwise, this looks ridiculous. It looks like just this zipping fast thing. OK, but now it's getting faster as it gets closer, but slower to start off. And that's cool. That's not built into um, GreenSock, for instance. I don't think. Certainly not as easily as, as we're able to do it here. Uh, in a time of four seconds, its ease is linear. We're looping true, and we're waiting one second. Isn't that beautiful? If you compare that to CSS animation, for instance, it's like way easier to understand and read. OK, so great. Um, there we go. That's it. So we make a new Rive. We bring in that Rive animation use its display to show it and animate it. Great. That's for the header and footer, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, next, let's go over to the input then, right here. Input. How did we make this Rive change based on the Zim slider? That's just a default, easy, quick Zim slider. All right, let's take a look at the input. So we brought in Rive. We brought in Zim. That's the Rive image. Here's the Rive object coming from the community there, the docs. There's the width and height, the artboard, the state machine. So there's an artboard that's kind of like which like the whole overall thing. You can have multiple artboards and state machines. It actually turns out, I think there's only supposed to be one state machine per Rive object. So uh, anyway, they're backing out of that. Maybe they're saying in the future, there's only going to be one state machine. Fine. Autoplay on load. So Rive also has an on load if you so desire. And in here, we are animating, like we're using a Zim ticker. So a Zim ticker constantly goes. And we're wanting to set the Rive object's input value to the slider's value. Yay, that's it. Originally in Rive, this was a bit more difficult. We would take the Rive object's state machine inputs, ask for the shimmer machine, get that would be the first input get its value is equal to the slider value and yeah, it's like uh yuck and it can get a little bit uglier than that too so rive still got a ways to go when it comes to ease of use it's just barely usable you know i've been doing this stuff for years and the documentations documentation arrive is still a bit new and tricky as far as i'm concerned to find things and they're doing things in a bit of a clumsy way. But um, anyway, so be it. That's it. So what we did is in our Rive object, we said, OK, we know which state machine it is already. So let's just make r.inputs be this. OK, so that's what r.inputs is, is that that matches the shimmer machine, because we already passed that in. And then at zero, if we want, we can just use r.input gets the first one of those. r.inputs is the array of those. So we can just, you, uh, quite often, it's the first value that we want. Input is set in Rive. And the input, in this case, is the percentage of that box showing. So that's an input of zero. This is an input of 50 or whatever. And that's an input of 100. So we, if we change the Rive's input, then we're getting Rive to change. Cool. And that's what we've done by setting it to the slider's value. Where's the slider, by the way? There's the slider. So there's the Zim slider with a, a maximum amount. We put a damp on that as well, which is kind of cool. 
and so that that's what's causing that damp damp effect where it sort of moves towards wherever the slider is at okay rather than exactly there we could take that away and you can experiment take that away all right we centered that and moved it down a little bit because that would be zero in the x we moved it and we moved it down 200 and that's what gets this slider down here uh i am telling you a little bit more about zim than zim people need to know <laughs> Okay, uh, just in case there's some ride people here. All right, let's move to the next one then. And this, well, why don't we do the node one first? So moving over to the node, what we're wanting to show in the node one is how to access the parts of Rive, the Rive animation, and they call those nodes. All right, so let's have a look here. That is node. We're bringing in Rive, this time a slightly updated version of Rive, it looks like. We're bringing in Zim. We are also animating to sound, and that requires us to use a certain type of sound. So, the, sorry about that. That's leftover CreateJS stuff that we have to deal with to animate to sound. We put that in there. So, my apologies. We are bringing in the sound there. So, this is where we bring in the Zim assets, and we're bringing in track1.mp3. Here's the Rive and we are calling a local version of Rai. Uh, the Rai file is locally called Boombox. That's its size. We've got an artboard, a state machine. That's the default state machine. And then on load, we are going to grab an input. Oh, this is the old input. So we don't need to do that. We can just um, grab inputs. So this would be r.inputs r dot inputs and oh i see this is a um that might be arrive i don't think an array so this is zim array r dot inputs is a zim array inputs done this way is a rive array that has a find i don't even know if we have a find in javascript or if that's a rive thing so why don't we just leave it how we had it so what was that inputs i think inputs it looks like there it's a way to find an input called music boolean rather than by number all right so that's just copied from some rive code probably so we'll leave it like that then here's how to get the nodes r dot artboard so we have actually the artboard is a property of our zim rive i'm not sure if it's a property probably not uh, it's probably artboards and then you have to get the artboard at a name or something like that like uh, like like this but anyway we have an artboards property on arrive and so r.artboard.node called speaker one sub speaker one etc so this gets a speaker one sub speaker speaker two sub speaker as in left speaker right speaker and uh what is that mm, handle joy one <laughs> i don't know what that is i can't remember did we use it handle joy one uh yeah okay maybe that's the whole the whole thing here because when we play boom 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 the whole thing is being squeezed so i think that's the whole thing versus the speaker and the sub speaker okay uh right so we get those things we're then taking our display and we're centering it moving it and this is some information about that same as before though so that's the actual zim display and we got a label when we mouse down if there's not already an audio then we're going to make the audio this track and play it and loop it so new odd is the way to make an audio out of track three so we're bringing that asset track three making an audio out of it and playing it we are animating the instructions the alpha in so if we refresh here Oh, when I hit play, it animates out. Oh, let me pause. Oh, it goes away forever. Okay, fine. So as soon as we're playing here, this is us playing, we're animating the alpha of the instructions out. Instructions dot animate to alpha zero. We're making a new sound wave that has six channels that we're matching the frequency of that audio. When the sound wave is ready, we're creating this ticker which is going to calculate so get some data 
by calculating the sound. So, sound wave dot calculate will calculate all those frequencies. So a ticker is happening all the time. So we're adding a function that is happening all the time. It's actually a request animation frame with some a stage dot update applied and some other things for it. Uh, but anyway, we got one ticker. Um, so ticker dot add. We're uh, calculating the data. And then we're setting the scale of speaker one, the subspeaker, to the data, basically, with at least a min of scale of that, a min scale of that, a min scale of that. And then we're adjusting it, the data, appropriately. OK, so what we just did here, by the way, is about five times as much code with raw JavaScript. So, well, four times as much, four to five times as much code with raw JavaScript. So, yay, let's be thankful. Um, that we're not hooking up all these uh, audio crap that we have to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, what else? There's the music Boolean. Ah, so this is an input, though. Music Boolean input value is equal to not that value. Um, and that's this input uh, right here to either animate. So Rive itself had something that was expecting animation and pausing it. And when we pause it, it does this little squeezing move. When we play it, it doesn't. It's being controlled by the sound frequencies. When we pause it, it moves to that little uh, little motion there. And that's just by telling it that Boolean whether it's true or false. OK, great. Nice. Uh, what else was I going to say about that? Yeah, and thank you very much, uh, Pedro, for that concept. We've been doing this kind of concept for a while, but yeah, there's the work and rive. And once again, uh, Zim com comes in at about half the, the original code. So that's nice to know as well. Okay, let's move to the listen. So this is the Zim listener here. We were using a rive um, event to follow that mouse, but unfortunately, the Rive canvas is invisible off the screen somewhere because we don't want to see the Rive canvas and the Zim canvas together. We're trying to integrate Rive into Zim. This is Zim, so I can roll over this stuff. Those are Zim buttons. I can roll over that. These are Zim stuff. So to integrate all of this stuff, it needs to be in one canvas. And that's one of the nice things about Zim. We have integrated components. Everything's in that canvas. Um, if you have separate components, things overlaid, stuff doesn't work as well. Uh, you can't you can't interact with both things if they're in the same place, and and you know not all all the time is everything in the same place. But anyway, it's it's nice to have everything integrated. So we're wanting to integrate Rive so that it can be layered in between Zim things. You know what I mean? So we can have things on top of it and things behind it. And that's why we moved it into Zim. Well, this cursor is on Zim. It's not on the Rive canvas. So that means we need to tell Rive, hey, you have this event that, that some animator has set up, some animator has set up for you. You've got this event, but please don't use that listener. Instead, use this data from the Zim listener. And for us to be able to control this, we have to use the Rive Canvas Advanced. So if we take a look in here, here is the Rive Canvas Advanced rather than the Rive Canvas. Okay, doesn't always, oops, doesn't always work out that way where this is the same, I don't think. Maybe it does. And maybe it does. Anyway, um, this one it did canvas dash advanced. We also have to use a new Rive listener. So we brought in our Rive advanced, our canvas advanced, and our Zim. Oop, same Zim. And here we've got a new Rive listener as opposed to a new Rive. All the other ones have new Rives there. Okay. So here we have a Rive listener. And what that Rive listener does is it activates in, in the background, it acts, activates WASM. So W-A-S-M. Uh, that is WebAssembly. Okay which works with the Rive Advanced, which means, or the Canvas Bench, which means that we can access the uh, the listeners and override them. 
Okay, so great. That's what we're doing. Um, and we're doing that in behind. So there's the, sta the stasher there is, hey, go get that, that running rive thing that's supposed to, to follow the mouse. And that's it. And then when it's ready, we have displayed it. We've scaled it to and centered it. Scale two will sort of fit it onto the stage nicely and then put it at the bottom. And then we've got a label that we're putting up at the top to make sure that, uh, I don't know, some label, wherever that label is, is above or below something. Oh, right. Ah, that's what it is. This whole Rive thing is white. So it's got a big white background. It's not a trans... The, the animator did not make it a transparent background, which means these things which we created early on, we want to make sure that they come up to the top. So therefore, this whole Rive thing is put to the bottom. Okay. So anyway, um, that's all working. That was pretty tricky to get working because remember the Rive canvas, it's actual Rive canvas is somewhere else. It's invisible. It doesn't, its mouse isn't in the same place. It doesn't get scaled in the same way that this gets scaled. So we had to handle how does the scaling work and pass in our mouse position and make the Rive, like convert it to an unscaled Rive thing that's over here. And yeah, it was, it was quite tricky but all done automatically for us. Hey, excellent. We've also made some work here to show that we've got this one as well, also was using Listener. And what it was doing is it was when we clicked on it, it would animate between these two states. Great, Rive knew what it was doing, but how do we use that? <laughs> so now that this, uh, this component, great, thanks Rive for making this component, but how do we in Zim know what we clicked on? And so you have to activate the Rive listeners. And what we've done is we have done that for you. So when we made the button, it's once it's ready, it's all there. All we have to do is say button dot on pointer up. And so we've already caught that. And this was uh, e dot state machine dot input at zero dot as boolean dot value. We'll find out if that's possible. Or not. I was like, oh god. So we made that easier. E, first of all, e dot input is just this stuff. The very first one, e dot inputs would be the array of inputs. Uh, we still, unfortunately, need the as boolean on there dot value for a toggle. That will that will adjust a toggle input. If you didn't make that a toggle input, if the original animator didn't make that a toggle input, or sorry, a um, a boolean input, then we wouldn't have needed that but it is a Boolean input. So there is a, um, oh, and the pause move. So we've also added pause move, pause up, pause down. And so those are properties made by the Rive listener that will pause the stasher's um, movement, like the pointer movement. So this is pointer movement. When we pause this, turn that off, note that the stasher doesn't animate. Great. So that's pretty cool. We can pause uh, those listeners. Yay. So Zim on the outside can pause the, the listeners or pause the up press or pause a down press. Uh, okay, great. And that's what that's doing. It's just setting it to the opposite of whatever the um, Boolean setting is. Nice. Here we go. So that's that one. I think that... Did I not show you a play where was that located which one had it was it the node i don't think it was the node was it the input oh i know where it was okay yeah back in zim so in zim um there's a little bot that's going around when i roll over it it rotates or it spins when i roll over it again it spins when i roll over it again <laughs> it spins come on there so that rollover just showed some electricity. That spun, that spun, and that showed electricity. There's also a, a, an interval that's showing electricity. Let's just wait there. Did you see it? So Zim has an interval, and when it does, it runs a trigger, it's called. So there are different types of inputs in Rive. There's just a, a number input, there's a Boolean, and there's a trigger. So the animator of this little Rive guy gave us three triggers. One trigger was that, one trigger was that, and one trigger was... Come on. 
that. <laughs> okay, so three triggers. And let's take a look and see how we I'll just view the source here, I guess. Uh, view page source. There is a header. So this is the header JS of that. There's some animations by Zim. Here is the Rive right here. Thanks, Bartek, for that Rive work. So we're bringing in Rive. We uh, are adding it to the stage. We're also animating its alpha in. So that's uh, there we are animating the whole bot. When we tap on the bot, we're going to this location right here. So when we tap, you know what? It'd be nice to actually see this with code coloring. So let me go find it over here. It's in Zim017 header. Okay, oh, here it is. Yep, when we tap on it, it goes to Zim. We could have taken any of its inputs and fired them if we wanted to when we tapped on it. But when we mouse over that bot, we're going to run odds. So odds without any percentage, if you say odds 90%, you have to be, uh, that's quite often. You know, you're gonna get a 10 is not very often. 50% uh, is half, but default is half. So half the time it's going to take inputs, the Rive objects inputs, Zim gives you the inputs array at two and fire it. So that's the electricity, the, or the big sort of electricity. Otherwise, it's going to take the first input, which is the spinning, and fire that. Okay, so input type, or sorry, trigger inputs have a fire method to call. And then we've got an interval right here. This is an interval. Check this out. This is the Zim interval saying a min between 5 and 10. So between 5 and 10 seconds, this interval will go. So no trying to figure that out with set timeouts in raw JavaScript and having the set timeout call another set timeout with this random number. You don't have to even think about that anymore. We can just pass that right in. That's called a dynamic parameter in Zim. And then it calls this function, which is taking input one, which is the small electricity, and firing the input. It took me ages to figure out how to fire something versus how to just set an input number. Like I said, really tricky to dig through and locate things in the documents as they stand at the moment. Um, much longer than probably should have. Okay, so there we go. Neat, huh? That's the Zim bot that's up there. So you're welcome to take a look at that code as well. Okay, don't know what I changed there. And where are we? I think we're pretty well done then, aren't we? Yeah. And we were looking at the new things in Rive. We saw all four of those Rives. And why don't I just take you to the docs here and look up updates right there. So the docs in updates. Here is the chatbot. We did a bubbling on that. Here's the Rive integration. And let's do a summary of what we've seen. We had four examples. Oh, we might actually want to look at Rive. So if you're from Rive, then you don't need to worry about this. But if you're not, why don't we look at Rive and then we'll come back here. Here's Rive. This is the Rive for the chatbot. So that was good that we saw that. It's a little bit of a mess. I don't know why it looks like that to start. Um, but anyway, there's these path animations. So there are the path animations on there. There's a couple, this is the animate, which means uh, here we've got the state machine. And when I run this, there goes the state machine. Let me see. click off that. Okay, so uh, it's waiting. It's, it's right here, it's almost done. And then it's moving to robot three path. So we've got some three paths here. There she be. If I these are the inputs and these are triggers. So there I'm going to flip it, and here I am going to add electricity, and there I am going to click on it. Uh, right. Okay. So um, there's also inputs here, like a number input. You and they get a number, and this is a boolean input, and it's a checkbox on or off boolean. So those are quite nice. Delete. Right click and delete. <clears throat> and those would act differently. And we've seen we've seen the numbers. So the numbers are on the first two or the first, second example, sorry, with the uh, slider animation used a number. 
and the boolean I think was on the listener example but we, we anyway and then the this one right here the little bot it has the triggers right there all right so that's this is quite nice the way these all work and you can join these little things so that's lovely to have this little state machine I don't quite understand it. Like I get it, it's going from here to here to here to here and it's entering from here. That's great, that makes sense to me. Some of these other ones don't make too much sense to me. Uh, entry and why is the arrow pointing that way and flips, I'm not sure. But anyway, I've been using animation tools for a long time and some of this stuff still confuses me. I'm not sure what is going on on some, some of these things but I guess if I were educated on it I, I would probably know it better um, I, I was trying to do things like insert weights I saw these weights here so an animator gave me this and I was trying to make it wait longer in the end I couldn't make it wait longer I tried to instead just increase the time the duration here and I adjusted some playback speed stuff uh, I just realized as well that I forgot to make a change. I was going through this earlier and I closed it down because I was demonstrating some of these path issues. Um, by the way, be careful. If you change the path here, it's adding keyframes to this. You want to go to the design mode and change the paths inside the design mode. Um, anyway, I did some changing, some demonstrating of this stuff, and then I closed it. I closed Rive. And... I, it didn't say, do you want to save changes? So just be careful. It's saving changes as you go. And so I didn't undo. Uh, undo was weird for me initially. I, I have my undo map to a different, like a control, like to the alt key rather than the control key. And the mapping didn't work here. It works in every other application, but not here. So I thought it didn't have an undo, but it does. It's a control Z, as you expect, but I actually have to use the control key. Um... Uh, I hope I didn't undo the wrong things there. Mm. So anyway, be careful. If you close it, it saved your last state. And then when I opened it up again, the undos weren't there. So I was like, oh my God, I had to redo that. I just realized that I forgot to fix something in here, but blah, blah, blah. I think you're going to find, coming from Adobe, you're going to find a lot of things. And like what I was doing to demonstrate this, I was pressing on things and moving things and things weren't moving. Other things would move, wrong things would move, all sorts of crap going on. I, I swear, I tried to do four different types of things and all four different types of things I could not do. And yet I've been working in these types of animation tools for some time. So uh, certain things are nice, certain things education will help, other things aren't quite there yet as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's my quick thoughts on Rive. Perhaps we'll do an explore if I happen to learn Rive better. We'll do an explore on that later. Uh, but for now, that's, that's all I got. So Rive lets you make interactive graphics and animations. Rive is an animation tool similar to Adobe Animate Flash, but with a special state machine and without a coding language. So you've got to code in raw JavaScript to code it, or they're making the runtimes for all the various platforms, and then they should expose various properties that, much like we've just been using in Zim, there's that available. So I would not code Rive with raw JavaScript to make games. You should use something else. Uh, you could come and try to use Zim. Zim will help you do a lot of things that uh, raw JavaScript doesn't have. Okay. It's got this cool connector node system, great. Personally, I've done interaction, interactive animations for years and lots of tools, but at a 10th glance, seriously at a 10th glance, the state machine still confuses me. Education would help. Most of these Rive animations could just be done in Zim, but bones are nice. So Rive's got bones. We didn't see where the bones are. They're, I don't know, some, uh, they're, that's the bone tool right, right here, uh, which would bend this stuff so uh, the animator might have done that like as it's speeding perhaps these could have bent a little bit to make it look like it's arching forward as it moved and that would have given it a more of a rive look uh, as opposed to the animations we've got now which zim could have animated the head a little bit first then the chat then the bot and we even have sequences that would make that even easier than what it was to do actually in rive where we're handling timeline stuff uh, anyway, so bones are nice though. 
Rive apps can be displayed in Zim using one of the two classes in, in the meta under the docs, the Rive class or the Rive listener. If you are a Rive animator and you're using Zim or somebody in Zim is going to be using your animations, my recommendation is to not put the not put the listeners in Rive. Let Zim do the listeners. We have listeners just fine. And just use inputs, okay? Just use a number input or use a trigger input or a Boolean input. And then we can use Rive. As soon as you use listeners, we have to use Rive listener. It's harder, there's a delay. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's using the Wasm stuff, uh, etc. So there you go. Okay, super. I think that this has been a Zim Explore where, oh, no, it hasn't been. <laughs> it's kind of like a Zim Explore. What are we at? 40 minutes? Yeah, this is supposed to be a bubbling. Bubblings are supposed to be fast. We're just demonstrating what's new. But there was a lot to talk about in Rive. So this has been a Zim Bubbling. And uh, come on and visit us, visit us, zimjs.com slash slack. <laughs> okay. All right. Hang on just a second. Uh, get back there for you people who uh, don't know Zim. Here's Zim again, and right up top here, Discord and Forum. All right, so if you come into Discord, oh, crap, that's Discord. I don't want you to come into Discord. What happened here? And launch the, sorry, come into the Forum. Um, come into the Forum. Forum is better where we've got all sorts of questions and answers happening. Discord's there as well, but it's a, I don't know, not as well used. So come into the Forum and uh, ask any questions you have, uh, join sign up. We'd love to see you there. All right. Now, this has been a What's Bubbling a Zim. Take it easy. Have a great day or night. Ciao.